Right, hello everyone. <clears throat> so this week's video is going to be about me getting ready for going away to Lewis because soon, in the next few weeks, three or four weeks, we'll be going to uh, the Isle of Lewis in Scotland and we've been there before. So this, as you've just seen, is my sketchbook of um, Lewis that I did the first time back in 2018. Uh, we were meant to go back in 2020, but obviously COVID hit. And then we got our money refunded on the place that we stayed and we never went back. But now we've got the van. We're just heading up in the van with the cat, Rowley, um, and we're gonna just explore around. If you've never been, or if you've never even looked online, Lewis is the most beautiful place that I've ever been in the world. And I'm really looking forward to sketching because as you know, I've started this illustration course. I'm starting to up my illustration practice a lot more. Um, so I really want to take, uh, make, I want to make sure that I've got the right materials to take. So, um, I, what should I show you first? So I've ordered some things from a website. So I use a shop called, not exclusively, but I do uh, often use a shop called Jackson's Art. They're an indie shop based down in London. And uh, I really like them because they've got a really good range and, um, they've really started to make an effort with their packaging to make it plastic free. Uh, so I, 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 the other week I had a look through all of my art supplies and decided what I needed, things that I was lacking in, um, that might make my sketching experience in Lewis a little bit better. And I've done a little order. So first let's do a little unboxing. So the first thing we've got is this. They normally pack their pencils just in um, leftover cardboard boxes from the pencils, but I suppose maybe because this is a single pencil on its own, that's why they've used the plastic wrapper. Yeah. So this is a uh, Polychromos, um, Faber-Castell Polychromos colouring pencil. And this is the colour indigo, sorry, dark indigo, uh, 157. And I found that this is just really, really nice to sketch in. So let me show you my current sketchbook, some of the pages. Um, so this, for example, I shared this on Instagram last night. Uh, this was of the Good Ship Illustrations Early Bird Live Zoom party that we had last night. And I think it's just a really nice kind of alternative to black, but also it's a bit more lively than the Payne's Grey. Let me compare it to the Payne's Grey that I've used previously. So these are in Payne's Grey, which I really love. Um, again, it's a great alternative to black, but the blue, I don't know, it just feels a bit more lively to me. You might not even be able to tell the difference on there, but um, I, I can in... IRL in real life. Um, so I've got another one of these because my the one that I've got at the moment is about an inch long. Right, which one to open? <laughs> this one. Okay, so these packing beans, just so you know, uh, they are compostable and you can tell whether your packing beans that you get are compostable because if you put them in water they dissolve uh, and that just means that they're made out of 100% cornstarch which is a natural product um, they've just been expanded like a what's it uh, so again this is the plastic free box so in this one should be some watercolors Right, so, oh, I know what's in there. 
Right, so firstly I got this gouache. So this is a Shinnan Pass colour design. Um, if I remember rightly, these are the watercolour gouache hybrids. Let me just check. Yes. So it's um, the Shinnan Pass colour design in 899 white. And it is billed as um, a hybrid between watercolour and gouache. Now gouache is a lot more opaque than watercolour. So when you're painting in watercolour, you usually allow the weight of the page to be the white in your painting. But with gouache, you can put white on top of colours. And I needed a new gouache because my old gouache is this one. So this one was out of a Royal Talons pack. It's really lovely, really great quality. It's just running out. There's still loads in there, but um, I didn't want to knead it and then not have it. So um, I like to keep a gouache in my pencil case for adding highlights to things. Um, it's great to make watercolours a bit more opaque. So if you add some gouache to it, it bulks it up a little bit. Um, I used it in the winter. Let me show you this. So I use it in the winter. You'll have to see if you if you haven't seen this video, I'll link it in the video description. Um, but I went out when it snowed. Oh my! The sketchbook got absolutely soaked. But it, I, I really enjoyed the splatter effect of the gouache. This is white gouache on an old toothbrush that I cut down, and I just put a bit of bit of it on there and just sprayed it. Um, and because it's opaque, it doesn't. Uh, doesn't dissolve when it's on top of other colours. It, it keeps its keeps its brightness. So yeah, I'll always have a white gouache in my pencil case, just in case. So here are some half pans of Jackson's own artist's watercolours. So currently, the only watercolours I've got from this Winsor and Newton pack that I bought a million years ago. And these are all half pans as well. So the size, this is a half pan and a full pan would be this size. Um, and these all came with the pack. My ultramarine ran out because I used it all the time. Uh, so I thought instead of just using these, why don't I get some more to complement these colours and buy a bigger pack to put them all in and take them all away with me rather than taking lots of different boxes of things. So to complement these colours, I got A Jackson's own Thalo Green, so 227, sorry, 277. I got an Ultramarine Deep to uh, to replace the one that was absolutely used to death. So that's number 257. I got a Prussian Blue because I am so in love with Prussian Blue. And I recently watched a YouTube video, um, I've forgotten what the series is called. Great Art Explained, I think it is. I'll link the videos in the description. Uh, but I watched a video about um, the Japanese Japanese art and, you know, the create, creation of um, art like the Great Wave. Um, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, so I'll link to, I'll link to that. But they, they were talking about the introduction of Prussian Blue and it got me really thinking about how I really like Prussian Blue. So that's uh, 261. Got a warm sepia, 417. I got an indigo. Indigo is probably my favourite colour, I've got to say. But um, obviously all mixes, all, all brands have a slightly different colour, so I'll be interested to see what that looks like. So that's 273 indigo. I've got a lemon yellow, 103. And then I've got a bright red, uh, 166. I've got the bright red, the lemon yellow and the ultramarine to provide me with the primaries to to make more graphic work when I'm doing illustrations but also you can mix these and you can make all of the other colours so that's why I got them but look how cute they are they're not even wrapped in plastic or anything nice so I'm going to put these down and I'm going to show you what else I got Oh my God, they look like sweets. A 
Bum, 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 bum. So this is a lovely card wrapper to protect this rather than plastic. So I got another watercolour tin. This holds more watercolour pans than the Winsor & Newton one, so it holds more than these. Um, I got one of these actually for my gouache as well. So I've got one for gouache, one for watercolours. Gouache is a type of watercolour, don't, don't get me wrong. But um, like I say, gouache is more opaque, so I like to keep them separate. So yeah, I got that to carry all of my watercolours in. So let's transfer those over. Thing that I've just done is I've taken all these out and looked back onto my footage and I've just written what each of the uh, of the colours is that I've just bought just in case so I'll show you mate I'll just show you okay so I've just written it somewhere there you go so for future reference when that runs out I'll know if I liked it I can buy it again and then these can just go back in here and I can always interchange them as and when. It's always nice getting new colours uh, for your watercolours. Um, so that's all them in there. There are some gaps for more if I want to buy any more in the future. But 
not right now. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and fill up my water jars. I'm going to get some clean water in that one. It's been there for weeks. And let's test these bad boys out. <laughs> Here's a pro tip for anyone who paints and also has a cat. Get some jars with lids because they will drink your water. <laughs> when I'm painting, you may wonder why I've got two jars. So I'll have one which is for my dirty water for cleaning my brushes. In fact, I need a cloth as well. <laughs> so I always have the cloth. Um, and when I'm painting, let me find a brush. That's the badger, that's what I was looking for. So when I have a dirty brush, I dip it in my dirty, dirty water one and wipe off as much as I can on the cloth. You can see it's very, very dirty here. Uh, so I, I do that until it's fairly clean and then I use this water as my clean water to dip into the watercolours so I don't end up muddying them. You'll notice that some of my old watercolour paints, especially the white one, you can see that one there, have got muddied up in the past because that's because I was inexperienced and I learned the hard way. So take it from me. Let me clean that up, actually. Let me get a clean of that white. Already I can see that the Jackson's own watercolours are so much more rich in their colour. Which, they, it almost looks a bit like gouache, which is really, and I really like that. Um, I'm not really a watercolour painter. Uh, I, I mean, I am, but um, I haven't done it for a long time. So it kind of feeds into my more graphic sensibilities now but yeah i really like that that's the bright red for jackson's and these are my two older windsor and newton ones watercolor itself is it does lend itself to a more kind of watery um expressive form of art so it's vibrancy isn't necessarily it's not everything that, you, that you're looking for but um for me i'm really i'm really pleased with that so let's continue through and then I'll write down what it is in there and I can keep this bit of paper with my palette so I know which paint corresponds to what and what it's going to look like.
So there we have it. They all correspond to how they're laid out in the pan, in the pan, in the palette. <laughs> I had to move some of the blues down here because I didn't leave enough space along the top. So it's all worked out well, it's fine. So it corresponds with how they're in there. When this dries, I'm just gonna write down in pencil what each color is, but the name of it doesn't really matter. It's more of a visual guide. So when I'm out in the field or wherever I am in the studio, I can use this as a reference and I'll, I'll fold this up and put it in the top of there. Um, but first we've got to leave this to dry. Uh, now, I was thinking about this white when I added, added it into the palette. Like, do I really need to put a little swatch there? Probably not. And some of you may question, why is there a white there? Which is a good and valid question. Now, whites in, when you're painting, they help to add tints. They, they make your colour into a tint. So if you've got cobalt blue, for example, and you want to do a whole range of your illustration just in cobalt blue, you are going to need different shades and different tints. Watercolour is usually great because for, for this because um, you can water down the colour and because the watered down colour... Um, once it's placed on top of the white, the white of the once it's placed on top of the white of the paper, the wa the watered down version of this will interact with the white, and the white of the paper will will lighten that that color, so it will appear to be a different tint. But adi the addition of white into this will do the same job. It will make lots of different tints of this, so you could mix lots of different colors in lots of different parts of your palettes, and then in theory, make a colour tint palette of your chosen colour. But I thought I'd include it in there just because it's in my palette and why not? Why the heck not? Okay, um, <laughs> I've borrowed one of my lights from downstairs just to make my studio feel a little bit lighter because it's so blinking dark. Might have to look into that and invest in some better lights. Anyway, so this is what that looks like. I've let it dry, I've added the names of them so I can reorder them if I do run out. So I'm going to rip that out, I'm going to fold it up and keep it in here for reference. And then let's talk about the things I'm going to take on my sketching trip to the Isle of Lewis. Right, so in terms of materials, uh, first let's talk about sketchbooks. I have a bunch of these kind of sketchbooks, cheapo. Um, I got these from Hobbycraft, but different companies do cheap versions. I think Jackson's do their own cheap versions of just a general sketchbook. The paper in here isn't anything special. It's like cartridge paper. It's, it's got a nice grain to it. So it does pick up pastels and pencils really nicely. You can put a tiny bit of water, watery stuff on there, um, but it's not watercolour paper, so the pages will buckle. To get around this, uh, I'm gonna take some watercolour sketchbooks too, but I'm not buying any specifically to go there because I've got loads with pages left over. So yeah, I've got a range of sizes in these, so let me show you. So I've got, um, A5 sketchbooks in just the cheap paper. I've got A4 sketchbooks, which obviously will open up into A3, double page spread. Again, just cheap sketchbooks, normal cartridge paper, the same as the A5 ones. And I've got super duper big ones, which are, these are A3, but obviously double page spread, it's a2. And I've never really worked this big before. I tend to use these for um, working in the studio if I do any kind of experiments, if I'm playing around like, and if I'm taking part in the Good Ship Illustrations art club evenings for example, I'll get this out. It's a big page to play with. But I think I'm going to take some big sketchbooks too. Um, so yeah, these are going to be in my in my arsenal, so to speak. But I've also got these. So this is, let me see, this is the Moleskine sketchbook. Um, it's left over from, so here I've put the dates on. I'm going to try and date all my sketchbooks because it's nice to look back on. Uh, this is an A4 Moleskine. 
I started this in 2018 when I was doing my Inktober Instagram challenge. Um, but there are some pages left. So I will probably, let's have a look, there's some experiments. There are like these pages left. So rather than let those waste, I'll probably take this sketchbook along with me. I've still to decide, but it's on my, it's on my probably yes pile. Uh, and then I got this one recently from, I think I got this one from Hobbycraft. Um, it's a Sea White of Brighton's sketchbook. Again, nothing mega special about the pages. It's kind of a smoother grain cartridge paper than, than these ones. Um, but it's a little bit thicker paper. And it was, it was one of the cheaper versions. So I thought this one might be good for taking travelling. I bought this one specifically for going travelling. And then I've got a hardback. So when I'm painting, painting on drawing, I can hold it and work on it. Uh, and because the paper's a little bit bigger, bigger it, because the paper's a little bit thicker, it, it can hold a little bit more moisture. But again, it's not watercolour paper. So this is a contender for things I'm going to take. But maybe not, because if I'm taking a big one, it might as well be a watercolour sketchbook. Mm. Oh, I've also got this one. This is also a Moleskine sketchbook. And this is my treasures sketchbook. So um, let me show you through this one. This, is gonna, this was intended as a neat sketchbook. So I don't know if, I don't know, part of me doesn't really want to mess it up, <laughs> which is silly because sketchbooks for, are, for, are for experimentation. But I've been really tidy and neat in this. But because I've been tidy and neat and precious, I haven't really done much. So I've done these. And they're documenting treasures I found on my walks. It's really nice to look back on, actually. But as you'll see when I get to the end here, that's as far as I've got. <laughs> so I've got all of these, all of these to go. So I'll probably take this over, over the sketchbook that doesn't have watercolour paper in it. So let me put that one down. And I'll take this one. I'll stop being precious over it because sketchbooks aren't a place to be precious. The good thing about this is because it's not spiral bound, um, yeah, so because it's not spiral bound, I could do a double page spread. So yeah, yeah, I like, I like the idea of this one more. And there's so many pages left in there. It'd be a shame to waste this just sitting on a shelf. Now, with my sketchbooks, I always take a bit of paper either to put down on top of a newly done page before it goes over or if I'm going to be putting any pressure on so if I'm going to be using uh, colour pencils or things I'll put this paper on the page previous to it just to make sure that there's no transference because when you lean on a page here it can sometimes push the colour from this page onto the page next to it and it can make you get sketchbooks a bit messy so I'll always do that I'll always have the C here that's the bit of card that was in this one um, I'll always put that in the page previously just to stop any any smudging yeah so in terms of sketchbooks I'll take my messy sketchbooks these ones will be made for uh, messy non-precious drawings. I'll probably end up whittling this down but so far I like the idea of taking my messy sketchbooks that I can work small and big in and then I've got these bigger uh, watercolour sketchbooks. These ones are mole scheme but there are different watercolour ones out there um, and also I've got these little A5 ones which I showed you earlier. Um, they've got the beginnings of uh, of use in them, but like this one for example, look at all those pages. 
I might as well use that. So that one's going. And this, is there any? Oh, there's loads in the back of there. So this again, this is a Moleskine sketchbook and this is the A5 Moleskine sketchbook. Now what I liked about this is that you can either use each page separately or you can do, I'm sure I've done one in here, there you go. You can do a big landscape um, and because there's no spiral bound, it, it is almost seamless. So that's going to go in my pile. That's a definite take, that one. And then this one is the Stillman and Burn Beta Series. This is a soft back watercolour. It's really nice to work with. But one thing I did notice the last time I used it, the reason I didn't um, really buy many more of these is that this first page, um, the watercolour, it kind of, I don't know how to describe it. The page almost started to um, bobble a little bit, but I remember this back from whenever it was, before 2018, like 2015, something like that. But the other pages that I'd done in it didn't do that. So I think it might have just been a one-off, a one-off odd page. Um, but it's a really nice option if you don't like a hardback. It's a nice feel to it. It's got rounded corners so they don't get dog-eared as easily. And again, it's not spiral bound so you can either use the pages as individual pages or you can do one big, one big landscape. They also do these uh, portrait A5s so they'll open like this and then you get a, a big A4 double page spread if you wanted to. I've got these left over so I'm going to be using these. That's definitely coin. This is my old Isle of Lewis sketchbook. I'll do a flip through of this at the end because it's really nice to look back on. There's not a lot left in here. There's one page left in there, so that's going to stay. Uh, but I will do a flick through of that for you, and you can see the beauty that I'm going to be going for. So yeah, these ones were my big moleskins. So they're going as well. So that's sketchbooks out of the way. Right, now in terms of materials, I want to make sure that I've got enough to have a good old play when I am trying to capture the landscape. So, you've just seen that I bought a new watercolour set and I've collated all of my old Windsor and Newtons into here as well, so that's got a mixture. So they'll be going with me. Watercolours are great to kind of very easily capture a landscape. It's very, it, it's very, rewar it's very rewarding getting a watercolour painting out. Um, I'll maybe do a video about watercolour painting in the future if you're interested, but it's also good for laying down colour and then you can build up colour on top of it, that. So that's why I've got these. I've also got gouache. I usually use gouache in tubes like this, but to make it easier when I'm travelling so I don't have to carry a load of tubes around, I've got another one of these, but I filled it with um, all of my gouache. Oh, there's another sketchbook in here. I'll do that sketchbook in a second. I'm definitely going to have to pare down my sketchbooks, I think. So this is just another tin, exactly the same, but I've put all of my tubes into empty pans and... Yeah. There we go. And there's my gouache. Gouache is great because not only does it lay down colour like watercolour does, but because it's opaque... Uh, they've crumbled, they're coming out. Because it's opaque, you can layer your um, gouache on top of other mediums like watercolours or pastels and pencils. So they're great to use together. So this is another sketchbook. I forgot that I put that in here. I'm going to I'll have a look through my sketchbooks at another time, but these are definitely big contenders. And this, look at all of those pages that are left. This is another Moleskine. So, oh, whereas this Moleskine mini was in landscape mode, this one is in portrait mode. So again, it's not spiral bound. So you can use it as 
a big double page spread and this gives you like a more of a it's closer to an a4 size rather than the panoramic long landscapes that this one would give you these two are definite definitely going in maybe i'll just take a big bag full of sketchbooks you can't have too much to draw on imagine getting halfway through a holiday where you want to do loads of drawing and not having enough to draw on there is quite a lot to draw on down there We'll see, but those are definitely winners in my book. So in this little box, I'm also, for the first time, going to take pastels out in the field to sketch with. These are Faber-Castell pastels. These were a gift. I think these were from my, from my sister. Um, I like the Faber-Castell pastels over some other brands that I've got because, if you look... Um, it's got it's got a little stamp on there which is the acmi stamp which means it's art and creative material institute certified that there's no harmful materials being used in the pigments so um perfect uh the reason i like pastels you might have seen some of my previous videos is because again it lays down color really quickly and on top of some dry watercolor it can add great texture so I was just going to take a selection of these, but the reason I didn't, so these come out in, in three little containers, and I was just going to take one, but I've got nothing to contain them in, so <laughs> I don't think, unless I can find something. Uh, so I'm probably going to end up taking them like this, and in this wooden box, which I got from the charity shop, which is a pastel box, pastel art box, and it closes up and it means they're not going to get crushed by anything. But there's a bit of space in there, so I'll probably fill it with either my um, paints or a couple of sketchbooks just to stop it rattling around as much. So yes, so my pastel is going to go up with me too. This is the most I've taken art supplies for a really, really long time. Um, but it's the first time in a really long time that I've been really inspired and energised to actually illustrate um, and work on my illustrative style. So I want to jump on that really. So some other staples in my pencil case. Firstly is gouache, white gouache, sorry. I take a tube of white gouache rather than relying on the dry gouache in my in my little palette because it's good for adding instant highlights to things, so light on the sea, um, white reflection in eyes, um, or just making some white pop. And it tends to work better from a tube. So I'll be taking my gouache. Toothbrush. Uh, toothbrushes are great for adding effects, like splattered effects. So going down to, going down, going up to Lewis, there uh, is a lot of sea, obviously it's an island, there's a lot of sand. Um, I might want to use this to create texture in the, in the picture. So I'll add some pigment on there and just spray like that. Like you've seen before, I've used it in the past uh, to create snow some snowy effects but you can also use it for like starlight so uh that, that painting there um that's a barn owl in the at the night at the night at night time uh, and the splatters have just been made to look like stars so there's lots of options there so my brush my toothbrush is going in Next are these. These are water brushes. So it's basically a brush with a water reservoir in it. And you, as you're painting, so you can use it alongside palettes or you know wet paint out of a tube, and you squeeze it as you paint, and the water comes out and wets the brush. It means you don't have to take 
water out with you. And as long as you don't mix your colours up, you can paint and then wipe it on a towel, squeeze, wipe it on a towel, squeeze, wipe it on a towel. Uh, so it really is um, really useful actually if you're going to be painting out in the field. This is a set I got from Jackson's. They do a set of three. Water brushes can be quite expensive when I was looking for some. I was looking for some because my sister, who's also an illustrator, uh, was telling me all about them. So I was looking at all the different brands, the different companies that do them, and they can be quite expensive. Uh, but Jackson's do this set of three and they've got three different, uh, three different ends on them. And yeah, I found them really good. I'll pop a link to these in the video description. In fact, while we're talking about that, I'm going to pop a link to all of the materials that I'm using or that I'm showing you here. Uh, I'll pop links to them in the video description. Now, these are links to Jackson's. I'm not sponsored by Jackson's, but because I like them as a company and I'm really impressed with how they're making such a big effort to go plastic free in their packaging, I signed up to their affiliate program. So the links link through to Jackson's and if it's your first time buying anything, if you buy it after you click the link, it'll get you 10% off your first order. So if, you, if it's your first order ever ordering from them, you'll get 10% off. And if you have already purchased from Jackson's before and you purchase from clicking through my link, it will benefit me without costing you anything. So I'm just telling you for a bit of transparency. So I'm not sponsored by Jackson's. They're not paying me to say these things. I signed up to their affiliate program because I genuinely like them and I genuinely use them. So these watercolor pens are the cheapest that I found and they're definitely going in my pencil case. These are Ecoline pens. They contain liquid watercolour, which you can also buy in tubs, not in tubs, in like little glass vials. And you can also use those glass uh, vials to refill these. But these are great for being out in the field. They are a brush pen, so they lay down colour kind of like an alcohol marker, but the benefit of this over an alcohol marker or a Copic marker is that it doesn't bleed through the page and it can also be reactivated with water because it is a watercolour. So I like these for details, for adding colours in the background. You can blend them together, you can uh, reactivate them with water and when they're used in conjunction with these water pens, I just really like those. So they will be going in my pencil case. Next are my Polychromos pencils. They are my favourite brand of pencil. I like how creamy the colour is, how vibrant the colour is and how it blends nicely together. You don't get that scratchy feel that of some cheaper pencils. Um, it, it lays down colour really nicely. Let me show you some of my sketchbooks. So it lays down colour really nicely. It's creamy and buttery and really, really nice to work with. So I'll be taking those. I'll definitely be taking my indigo because like I said before, it's a really nice kind of neutral alternative to black. That's my other indigo there. I will also take uh, Payne's Grey, which I've got another one to here. Um, I'm going to have to have a look back through my sketchbooks and see which colours I'm more likely to use. But sepia will go in. Uh, this is a nice colour. This is a warm grey 270. Looks almost white but it does leave a really nice colour on the page. So I've got some more here. I've got a warm grey 275. Well, that's another Payne's Grey. I don't need two, I don't think. Uh, let's have a look through my other colours. Pompeii and Red, that's nice. 191. That's a nice colour.
And the Brown Orca 182, that'll go in because it's a nice natural colour. I'm not just going to go for natural colours, but um, if I'm doing landscapes, I'm going to want options. I might just end up taking all of the polychromos that I've got because then I'll have options. Then I'll have options to do more kind of colourful illustrations as well. So yeah, let me grab all my polychromos. <laughs> No, this is ridiculous. I can't take all of my colours with me. Mm, maybe I can. Oh, I'm so undecided. Yeah, no, I'm going to go through my old Lewis sketchbook. I'm going to see what colours... Hmm, I don't know. No, no. Let me just go through the pencils that I've got and look for the colours I'm more likely to use. than it was before. Before I go, I might just go through it one more time. I might do some sample pictures, you know, just to kind of tear it down. Because like I say, the more choice I have, the worse my pictures end up being. So it might be better having a smaller amount of stuff, but I want to make sure I've got enough to build up texture because, um, I mean, these are lovely. I like this sketchbook, but it's, they're quite flat. And I'm trying to build up a lot more texture, a lot more lay layers on my sketchbook. So I want to give myself enough enough for that as well. So one thing I've got recently to help me do that are these as well. So these are Karen Dash Neo Colour crayons. So these are great for kind of adding a bit of texture. It picks up the grain of the paper. And the good thing about these, so these are the Karen Dash Neo Colour 2s as opposed to the Neo Colour 1s. And the Neo Colour 2s are water soluble, so you can go back over them and blend them away or keep them as crayons to pick up that texture of your paper and add some interest, add a little bit of interest. So I've made a little tin, I found a little tin and I've uh, made this that little pencil case for the Caran Dash. So that is another thing I'm going to be taking. One thing that, so when I when I very first started doing art and kind of really taking it seriously as something I wanted to do full time, I was doing pastel pencil, pastel pencil, I was doing pastel drawings and charcoal drawings and I really, really loved that. But I also loved illustration and watercolours and colour and simplicity. And, and I could never marry up the two. But I think that's because I never gave myself enough time to kind of marry up the two. And I'm, I'm just about sensing within my grasp is an amalgamation between my pastels, my charcoals and the kind of, the kind of realistic effects you can get with the pastels but also combined with a more illustrative style. If you think about children's picture book illustration, for example, I'm, I'm feeling it within my grasp as something that I can do to marry them up. And this is gonna be the trick to kind of play around with that. I'm not gonna get too precious and think, oh, this has got to be all perfect drawings. I'm just gonna enjoy it and go in with the mindset of making a mess and exploring and playing. And that's why I wanna take enough materials. I don't want to hamstring myself and find that um, it's not doing me any good. One final thing that I might take actually, which these are really good for loosening up 
um, your pen work. Um, so these are bamboo, uh, bamboo dip pens. And if I get some ink, I can show you. I've also got some sticks, which I'm assuming I can pick up sticks when I'm there, but I might take a couple of my favourites. But this is also good, potentially, to um, to add something different rather than just like a thin pen that is all the same thickness all the way around. Ink and dip pens. They, they're unpredictable, really. Sticks and ink, they're unpredictable and they can create some lovely, lovely, lovely effects. There's not enough on there, my ink's running out. Um, but, you know, taking a non-standard material, like a stick, um, can really help to add different dimension to your illustrations and your drawings. So I will probably take some kind of ink and some kind of stick as well. This is Winsor & Newton Indian ink. Uh, it's non-waterproof. I do have a waterproof ink in there. So you can add like textures. You can use this with paints as well. You can use it to draw draw things but you see how it's like non not predictable there's different thicknesses there so I'm thinking maybe a stick and some ink as well and I think that's it give myself enough to play with and really find find something special for watching this week's video if you did enjoy it please do like and subscribe to help me reach more lovely people like you and if you're curious about some of the materials that I've used in this video I will link them in the video description all of the links are affiliate links that I've got with Jackson's I'm not sponsored by them they're not telling me to promote these things this is a video full of genuine materials that I use and the only reason I signed up to Jackson's affiliate program is because I genuinely like the company that they are. No pressure, but remember if it's your first Jackson's order, clicking through the link will get you 10% off. And if it's not your first Jackson's order, any orders you make clicking through the link will help me out without costing you anything. So enjoy this little flick through and I'll see you in the next video.